I'm working on a toy robot arm, or it's kind of a toy. Uh, it is Arduino powered, and I'm writing all of the software from scratch just so that I can learn about robotics and robot control. So pretty much I started with a, just trying to basically get stepper motors to move. Um, and that in itself is kind of a challenge. I looked at existing stepper motor controls uh, firmware like Gerbil and um, you know Smoothie or Marlin or something like that just to kind of see their approach. And then the next part was actually building some kind of a robot jig. So, I mean, it's not super um, fancy at this point. You can see I even have a piece of angle iron to hold the motor, just whatever I can do. Uh, this is like an extruder motor from a 3D printer. I mean, it's a NEMA 17 with a five to one gearbox, but like, I think when we bought it, the intention was for an extruder. And then, you know, a little bit of laser cutting and some band sawing. And I had my two arms. Uh, now, they're both about 200 millimeters from center to center. And I'm trying to use that in the math to be able to then calculate, um, I guess it'd be X, Z coordinates or world coordinates. Um, if you think about it, there's really two ways to tell a robot to move to a position. One, you could command each motor to move to a certain rotation. And that's what I'm doing right now. But the next thing, the next thing I'm working on um, is to provide it with a point in space uh, specified by some amount in the horizontal axis and some amount in the vertical axis and then the robot will calculate what rotations are required in order to move the end of the robot arm to that point so I could I could pick a point in space at the end of my screwdriver tip and then program that point in and tell the robot to go and it would move the arm up so that the it's a, it touches the point that's the end goal let me just show you what I've got right now So you'll notice it sort of backs off this home position before going anywhere. And obviously that's because the joint two arm is trapped in home position. The reason that I have it sitting like this is because whenever the robot is powered off, gravity will naturally keep the robot in this position without it falling. So I can turn it on and off, basically use it like a home position. I don't actually have any limit switches and there are no encoders on these motors. So if the, it's ever powered off, uh, the robot would just fall to the ground and lose its position. So I have it sort of tucked in in this way that it can stand up and kind of know, I actually have it programmed in how many degrees each joint is uh, whenever it's in this sort of awkward home position. Anyway, that's good enough for me for now to allow me to move on to the programming. Well, I used FreeCAD in order to make some of the parts. This is the J1 or Joint 1 arm. So that's the big one that you see. It's made out of acrylic laser cut, and it had a couple positions that needed to be pretty accurate, like the mounting holes for this hub that goes onto the uh, J1 motor and also that's where the J2 motor mounts. And then I put these little notches in here for wiring to uh, put zip ties in. And then secondly, I made a drawing of this angle bracket, which holds the J1 motor down to the baseboard. And I used the Tech Draw workbench in order to kind of get the dimensions on paper since I was making this piece manually on a mini mill. I'll briefly show you the software, or at least the API that I'm using to program. So I modeled the 
programming a little bit off of a Fanuc robot, just in that, I mean, I'm starting basic here, but I have just a J function, which is a joint movement, and uh, in practice, that looks like um, I give it a J, and then I can specify two coordinates, which are the J1 rotation and the J2 rotation, or how much each motor. So each uh, uh, J command moves both motors at the same time to the given coordinates, and then the final parameter is the speed, which is a percentage of the maximum speed, which I really just determined experimentally based on how fast I can go until the steppers start losing steps. So I made a couple subroutines, which are just functions. Uh, the first one is to move the robot up, move the J1 arm back, and then move the J2 arm forward a little bit. I call that the ready position. It's real close to the home position, but from the ready position, you can safely move to any place. And then I also made a home routine to safely move the robot back to the ready position, tuck in the J2 arm, and then come down to home. Well, I just had a breakthrough moment. I was able to get the math to work out so that uh, what you'll see, I can now trace a square, the shape of a square in the air. So that's the start of the square right there. See, it's making straight lines. Now the control board that I used is pretty simple, but it's actually custom. Uh, it's pretty much the Arduino um, minimum required components like the chip and the oscillator and you know a reset button and a regulator on this half and on the other side i have three palalu well i have spots for three i'm only using two of uh, the palalu stepper drivers and you know a place to select micro stepping which i'm using step as much micro stepping as i can because um these motors or this one doesn't even have a gearbox on it so its movements are hopefully oh that's See how big each step is. So yeah, I'm, I'm using 16 times micro stepping, and then I'm able to program the board using uh, FTDI thingy. But unfortunately, it has to be backwards. You know, I guess that's just uh, design oversight. Anyway, I hope you can see it, it, it's definitely a work in progress. But uh, uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed kind of seeing what I've got going here. So thanks for watching.